You may know Panic as a maker of Mac and iOS software like Transmit and Coda, but it's recently embarked on a very ambitious project, its first ever piece of hardware. It's a gaming handheld called Playdate. We were looking for something to do to celebrate our 15th anniversary, and Panic has always been a software company. So the idea of building something in hardware was really appealing and sounded really fun. So we started thinking about ideas for things you could put in your desk, like a calculator or a clock or something like that. We eventually came around to the idea of doing a kind of an update to a game and watch game like Nintendo used to make. Its simple minimalist design has a very retro feel, but with very modern sensibilities. On the front here is a black and white sharp memory LCD, very high contrast. On the top is the power button. There's a menu button on the top here. There are also the D-pad and the A and B buttons on the bottom. So the screen came about, it's a black and white non-backlit screen. We knew we needed something different to make this device feel different to people. If we just replicated the screen you had on your phone, we didn't think that'd be nearly as exciting. But we thought developers might be excited at the prospect of having some constraints and having something that was going to feel different to them than what they were doing elsewhere. It's really fun doing graphics for black and white screens. It's incredibly easy to knock out uh, lots of graphics and lots of uh, code for the device really quickly. And on the side, there is an analog crank. Yes, you heard me right. It is a flip out analog crank that you can use to control some games. The industrial design was by Teenage Engineering, a Swedish design firm known for their music synthesizers and some IKEA products. Um, their best idea was coming up with this little crank here that we use for games. It does not power the device. It, uh, it is used as a controller in a variety of games. But the crank provided us with just enough weirdness and just enough differentness to make this interesting. He has a speaker, a microphone, there's also a USB-C port on the bottom and a headset jack. Inside of it, there's an accelerometer, there's also 128 megabytes of RAM and two gigabytes of internal storage. He uses an ARM processor similar to most smartphones. As software folks, hardware is really, really different and really, really difficult. Um, it's very expensive to make mistakes. We've gone through a lot of different designs trying to make this work. One of the trickiest things was the D-pad. In our device, it's so thin that we have uh, very little room for the D-pad to be able to depress the way it does on most controllers. So we had to come up with a design that still felt satisfying, even though we had so little room to work with. Panic has designed all the testing equipment, which is something, again, new for us. We've never done anything like that before. It's a lot different than the testing software and potentially has much more serious ramifications if you ship something that has a defect versus in software, where you fix it once and then you propagate it to everybody else within 10 minutes. Now, if we ship something and it has a problem, like, we've got a problem. <laughs> so it's, um, the stakes are just much higher here in terms of getting it right the first time. Included with the cost of the handheld is a season's worth of games. You get 12 games total with one arriving each week over Wi-Fi. We had the idea of changing the game every week. It's a kind of a surprise. So one week it'd be one game, the next week your device would transform into an entirely different game and you'd never know what was coming next. We've debated, we've gone back and forth on whether the device should just be that game for that week, which sounded in a way like a lot of fun that everybody be playing those games in, in sync with each other. Uh, but we're currently thinking we're probably going to let you play the old games too. So, so that's where we're, we're currently landing on that. The game designers include very prominent names like Kira Takahashi, who designed Katamari Damacy. This was a Sean Inman, Bennett Foddy, and more. The one I tried was Takahashi's Kranken's Time Travel Adventure, where you used the crank to control the flow of time to avoid obstacles, enemies, floating butterflies, and so forth. If the Playdate is a success, then we definitely would love to have more seasons of games uh, and other ways to distribute games as well. Um, we're going to be releasing an SDK, a development kit. We opened up our website, uh, play.date slash dev, which is our developer portal. And we've gotten over 8,000 people signing up saying they'd like to write a Playdate game. We expected maybe there'd be 50 at best. And so we have a lot more than we expected. Playdate's never going to be a locked down device. It's always going to be wide open, so you don't need Panic's permission to distribute games for Playdate. You can do that on your own. You can sell, 
do it for free, whatever you'd like, but we are not going to be a middleman to keep you from developing and, and distributing your game. The Playdate is priced at $149 and should be available for pre-order later this year and it will ship in early 2020. If you're interested in Playdate, you can go to play.date and sign up for the mailing list. That way you'll be the first to know when pre-orders are available. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And for more information about the Playdate and more, go to Engadget.com.